Hi, it's Leonie West from Westerly Design and I'm going to show you our feathers templates. There are four templates in this set, a two inch, three inch, four inch and five inch. The measurement is the size it will sew out from edge to edge when it is sewn and with it we can sew a number of different types of feathers. This is feathers which have been stitched down a straight line so first I sewed in the spine and then I sewed the feathers going up and down moving over and doing the other side coming back up round and that's how that one is done. For this border I sewed a double spine and then I've used only one template and I've made sure that my feather tops all are at the same level and the same for the bottom. With our feather templates you can make your own designs of feathers, you can use straight, wavy, you can also sew them so they go from one direction to the other direction and I'll now show you how I sew a feather. I stitched two lines to represent a border and I've put one line down the centre of that border. I now bring my feather template into place and what I want is this edge of my template to just touch the foot on this side. I also want this centre line to be lined up on the stitch line that I've done and then I'm going to sew around this first feather. For the first feather I'm going to sew all the way around the template. I'm going to come back to the start and stop in the middle, leave my needle down. I'm now going to move the template across and I'm going to make sure that centre line is back on my stitched line in the middle and my template is just touching the foot. I'm now going to sew the other side. I'm going to come back to that starting point again, stopping with my needle down. So I've now sewn my first two feathers. What I need to do here is keeping it in place, you would normally not move that template. I need to sew back up to around here I'm going to use one, two, three, four, five lines. So each time I stop I'm going to stop on that same line mark. So I'm going to line it up and I'm going to backtrack back up my feather. It's only for the first one that I need to backtrack this full distance. So now I'm at that line that I pointed out. When I'm going to use the same line repeatedly I will often just put a piece of painters tape up next to that line. This doesn't leave any residue on my templates but it gives me a guide to say that that's where I'm going to come back to so I've marked this one and this one. So now I'm going to make sure my line is aligned in the centre again. My foot is touching the edge of the template and I'm going to put the next feather in. When I come down to the centre to that line I'm going to stop needle down. Move the template over again touching the edge of the foot and making sure that my centre line is lined up. At the moment I'm using that centre line but I could have chosen to use another line on the template to give me a different size feather and a different effect to the feathers. So we're now going to come back, we touch the line that from the first feather and we're going to backtrack. We're always going to backtrack when we come back in on these feathers and we're going to stop again with our needle in line with that line there. So now I just bring the template up, touch the foot, make sure the central line is lined up and away we go. So 
stopping. Moving over. So we're just moving from one side to the other, always making sure that our template is touching our foot and our centre line is in place. And this is changing our feather, but we're still only using one template. Stop again. Bring it up. This time I might move another two spaces across. I'll get a very short stocky feather, which could be the end feather. Stopping in the middle. Moving the template across again. We're touching our edge and we're lining up. And we could end our feather there. I'm going to use a template. This is our one and a half inch spine template. And I'm going to sew along here and put a spine in for a feather. I'm now going to sew a feather against this spine and this feather is going to go in and out at the edges. I also want this feather to have different size feathers in it and I'm going to use a number of the different feather templates. This is the five inch one that I'm using first. When I get down to the bottom where my feather comes in at the base, I'm just going to travel across to my spine outside my stitching line that will be in behind my binding and I'm going to put the template in on the other side. So I've got to have a feather that's going to be similar to that but I want it to be larger because it's on this side. One thing I always do when I'm doing this, I follow my straight lines of the border or the centre line I drew, keeping my template straight. I'm not particularly worried that it's sitting on the line, it's just keeping the template running straight. With this one I'm going to come back because this is the first feather. Stopping here. I'm now going to travel up the spine a few stitches. I'm going to look at the template and see what happens when I bring that template out. I'm going to get a nice large feather coming in here. So by having the template in approximately right position, I can actually stitch along the spine. I'm not using a template to do this, it's just sitting there. And now I can say, okay, I'm going to come into that edge there, making sure I'm quite straight with my centre line again. So I can preview what I want to sew by having the template in place. Coming back down till we meet our feather here and then come back sewing against that line. And we're going to stop somewhere. Not quite sure because I'm building this feather as I go. I may keep going with this template and bring one more further out. I want to also make sure that I'm going to be able to come into the line at some point so I need to allow about a quarter of an inch as it comes down to the stem. Where I'm going to put a smaller feather into here. I'm going to go with the next feather down in size, making sure I'm staying in line here. I want this one to come in quite, quite low. I'm going to travel up. bring it out again. I'm still looking and checking that that line is running with my centre line. I'm going to stop high on the feather. Where I stop 
in that backtracking changes how my feather shape is going to be. We're going to now travel again. And I might go back to the larger feather here. Backtrack. Decide where you're going to stop. With these feathers, there's no rules. And when I get to the end, it's getting quite small and I'm just going to use another size to put one in here. And that's the end of one side of my feather. I need to do the other side now. I can either backtrack down that spine or because it's the edge of a border I can actually just finish off my stitching there and then go back to the beginning and start with the other side. So I'm back down the other side and I'm going to use feather number four, the four inch feather, to do the first one on here. I'm putting a feather down both sides of the spine but I could quite easily have just done the feather on one side of the spine, stopped and I could have finished that off with cross hatching or straight lines down the other side of the feather which would look gorgeous. I'm going to travel along the spine again. The reason I didn't travel back to the spine and actually broke the threads and went down to the other end to continue is because I would have ended up with a lot of stitching over that spine and I'd rather have not quite such heavy stitching there. I'm going to use the smaller feather to go into here. And this is where I find it quite fun playing with these feathers because it's my choice as to what size feathers I have, how I make it dip into the spine, whether I have large feathers all the way down the spine, or I choose to have a number of different sized feathers, giving me more variety. I'm also making sure that when I go to the spine, I've got that quarter inch so that I can get back to the spine. Travel up the spine again. Going to stick with the larger feather for a minute. And I've just run out of thread. I've refilled my bobbin and I could have started where that stitch ended before where the thread ran out but instead I've just unpicked that portion of the feather and I've brought my threads back to the center. I can hide a join in that spine very easily rather than have a join in the top of the feather. and bump into our feather, come round and now I'm going to use the smaller size feather again. This one I want to come out a little bit further 
I really enjoy doing this style of feather. It gives me quite a bit of variety. I can bring it in out, change it. And we'll put one more feather in to complete the top here. And that's my feather done. I just have to finish off the threads. When I look back at this feather, I actually don't like this one feather in here. I can change that feather very easily, put another feather in here. I'm going to use the largest template. I'm going to figure out where that feather will come back in and give me that kick back into the spine again. So I've just taken that feather I wasn't happy with out. I've gone back to the spine and I'm going to start at the spine. Brought my threads up and now I'm just going to sew around the feather. I'm going to come over that stitching line of that feather just there. If there's a stitch, there is one stitch that's going to be out on its own there. And I will just tie that off and I'll tie this when I tie this one off. So if you finish your feather and you find that you've got one that you're not quite happy about, you can always go back, take it out and put another feather in. I'm much happier with that feather.